Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's live chat. I'm Angela Walters, and I was just thinking I really do appreciate all of you that take time out of your day to sit and hang out with me for a little bit while we talk about quilting. Um, I'm here every Thursday, 3 p.m. Central, and even if you can't make it live, no worries. I leave them on my YouTube channel so you can watch them later, but if you make it live, it's even better because you can type your questions out. Jessica's here to write them down, and I can answer them for you live so you can get get all the answers that you need to know. And if I don't know the answer, I'll just make something up. Sound good? <laughs> all right, in this week's live chat, we're gonna be talking about quilting with the Shelly ruler. And so this little gal is a ruler that I designed for machine quilting, and it makes a lot of really cool designs. And we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna show you some quilted samples and even kind of mimic how they came together. But before we get into that, just a couple things about this video or this live chat. I'm not necessarily showing you how to quilt with rulers. I have a whole free motion challenge quilting along about that, a whole video series, machine quilting with rulers, so you can check that out. Um, I'm just gonna be kind of giving you some tips to take those rulers that you already have and get creative with creating those designs. Second of all, even though I'm not showing you how to quilt with rulers, I do wanna talk about low shank rulers. So one question that comes up a lot when I'm traveling or teaching rulers is what, what kind of ruler should I get? There's two different kinds for the most part. We have our regular or high shank ruler. This one is thicker, it's about quarter inch thick, and this is gonna work for high shank sewing machines and I think almost every long arm. I don't wanna say everyone in case I'm wrong. And then the low shank one is just a little thinner and that's gonna be perfect for low shank sewing machines. It's gonna allow you to get around your foot and quilt those designs. Now, even though I'm partial to Shelly because she is my baby, the things I'm gonna show you can be accomplished with most any arc shaped ruler. So don't feel like you have to, you know, throw away all the rulers you've got. We're gonna talk about how to do that. And then I'll show you how to work through it. So just make sure you have the right ruler for your machine. And another kind of thing I like to joke about is there's really only two rules in machine quilting. If you're gonna quilt with rulers on a long arm, you need to use a ruler foot to keep protect your uh, machine from running over and you wanna use a ruler base. Other than that, it's all fair game. So let's go to the pictures and let's kind of talk about what kind of designs you can make with the Shelly and with arc rulers in general. Now this is the sample quilt or the sample panel from the machine quiltings with rulers challenge. And in the video series, I show you how to use all different types of rulers and like all my other free motion challenges, those stay on my YouTube channel indefinitely. So you can go back and revisit some of those videos. And one of the videos in the series was how to quilt with arc rulers. And in, in that video, I show you how to, you know, work your way around the curve and how to deal with bigger or smaller arcs. So if you're like thinking, hmm, I don't have an arc ruler, but I kind of want to learn how to do that, check out that tutorial and it will show you exactly how to do it. So when we're talking about arcs, there's so many different things you can do with this type of ruler. It's not just for clamshells, although we're gonna definitely see how to do that. Anytime you have that kind of arced shape, you can rotate it in all different directions and create an interesting motif. So in the center of this block on my panel, I have quilted that arc so that it rotates around and kind of brings attention to the center. And since it was a really kind of round kind of shape, it was more like a half circle, it just gives it a more rounded appearance. If I had a, you know, more like a teardrop shape arc ruler, it would just look a little bit different, but it's still gonna be pretty fun. So using this in all different directions will create some really cool effects. And sometimes you don't really know what it's gonna look like until you try it. So the best kind of advice that I could give is to get a yard of fabric, put it on your long arm, or make a quilt sandwich on your sewing machine, grab a ruler and see just how many ways you can use it to create different designs. Will every one of them turn out great? Nah, but you can cut out the good ones and keep them kind of as a design inspiration. In fact, here in a little bit, when I show you the quilted samples, that's exactly what I've done, which is why they're all cut up. I've cut out the bad ones, I'm not gonna show you those, and kept the good ones. So taking that ruler and rotating it in all different directions is a great way to create those motifs and draw attention to the center of your block. You can also use your arc rulers for echoing. So in that pinkish red portion of the block, I've kind of added some of those wider echoes using that arc ruler. It's not the exact shape of that lighter color in the center, but it does give it that fun, different, whimsical look. So when you're echoing your blocks, it doesn't have to be a perfect match as long as it looks smooth and intentional. So even though it doesn't fit, the lines are smooth, it kind of looks like I meant to do it, and it's gonna be fine. 
And when in doubt, if you do it once, just do it all the rest of the times and it will look right. <laughs> I like to joke once is a mistake, but twice is a design choice. So use it for echoing some of those shapes that you have, especially if you have smaller areas that you wanna build up and separate from the filler. Now clamshells and orange peels. This is the more classic use of arc rulers. Towards the top, you can see my basic kind of clamshells. This is a great way to add a soft kind of curvy look to your quilts. And it's a great way to take a smaller ruler and use it um, as over your whole quilt. Just because you have a, a ruler this size doesn't mean you can't repeat it to create bigger and more interesting effects. But then as we move down, I kind of added a little bit more to those clamshells. The second row has some echoing. So echoing each row is just gonna give it a little bit more detail. It's just gonna draw a little bit more attention to that. Just, just a little fun, little fun variation. And then as you work your way to the bottom, those are our orange peels. Sorry, orange peels. I said that so weird. Um, orange peels are simply a row of arcs and then a second row of arcs that are upside down and offset. And I'm, I've kind of pulled out some diagrams to show you how this goes. So if you're thinking, I don't know what you're talking about, just wait for it. Um, we're gonna definitely see how to do that. All right, so when you're looking at your ruler, there's a couple of terms you're gonna want to know. So reference lines that are on your ruler, especially your Shelly ruler, are there to help you out. They're there to make sure that your designs stay somewhat straight to your quilt or your piecing. And so be sure to look at your ruler and use those to reposition the ruler as you go. And that's gonna give you the best results. Now it's very forgiving if it slips a little bit or it's not quite right, just keep going. I promise once the whole area is filled in, you're just gonna see that beautiful overall texture. I know you've heard me say that before. So you're definitely gonna use those reference lines. Now those needle stops, those little kind of U shapes on both sides are some of my favorite things in the whole world. It's like a little boundary so that when I'm quilting around it, I know exactly when to stop. I don't have to hesitate and worry about going too far. It's gonna give me a clear stopping point and it makes repositioning quick and easy. So Shelly has those, um, not all rulers do, not all my rulers do either, but if they have it, it's gonna be a little bit more helpful. Now, one thing I do wanna point out about the Shelly ruler that I just love, so when I design the rulers or when I design any rulers, I try to think what do I want and what do I struggle with and how can I make it easier? So on the Shelly ruler, even though that top curve is smaller than the bottom, it actually creates the same size curve when you quilt it. So that is huge. That means I can work from both sides of the ruler so that I don't have to change the position of the ruler to my foot. One of the, not I won't say biggest drawbacks, but one of the uh, limitations of quilting with rulers on a long arm is I can't easily move the orientation of my quilt. So if I wanna quilt an up upside down arc, I've gotta turn the ruler upside down and hold it from behind the foot and then hope I can quilt along it. Being able to just whip the ruler around and do the same on the other side is gonna make that so much easier. So if you prefer working from one side of the foot on a long arm or even a sewing machine, then this is gonna be the trick for you. All right, so like I said, we're gonna talk through the clamshells, a nice kind of soft curvy design um, and what I love about this is it kind of lets you quilt your whole area just by working in rows and after you've quilted your row your section of clamshells you could come back in and embellish with other designs or other fillers or you can come back and add a second row upside down to make our orange peels so we're gonna see this here in just a second now I've broken this down for you step by step but I also have the sample here and I'll kind of trace over it so you can see what I'm doing Orange peels allow you to take that shape, that curve um, ruler, that arc ruler, and allows you to create more dense quilting um, within your area. So the clamshells were a little bit more open, a little less dense, but if I wanna quilt something to death, do adding an extra row is gonna create that orange peel effect and be really fun. But one thing that you might not consider arc rulers for is border designs. So when you're working with your rulers, try to use it in all areas of your quilt. I mean, we've already seen the motif where we're changing direction. We've already seen all over. But in these instances, I'm using a part of the ruler to create some different effects. So the one on the left is kind of like a half arc to fill in those borders. It kind of has like a, a fun, kind of funky look. Or the one in the center, I'm combining multiple arcs in different uh, orientations to create a fun, whimsical leaf. And then using the straight edge side of Shelly to quilt up to the next one. So this would be great 
if I want to add a little bit more detail to those blocks or if I want something to look like a flower or something like that. And next over, uh, we can see kind of the circles with partial arcs in it. This is basically just clamshells without adding the extra arcs in every row. So this could be a fun border filler if you have border that fits that size. And it can also go back and add some more detail in there with your free motion quilting if you wanted to, if, if you feel like quilting things to death. And since the Shelly ruler is a half circle, I can quilt a half circle and flip it around and do the same on the other side to give myself a perfect circle. I like this because having one circle ruler is a little tricky to work your way all the way around. Being able to do it in halvesies makes it a little bit easier to um, manipulate and work your way through the quilt. And if you don't like the idea of doing clamshells over the whole quilt, I know it can be a little like intimidating, especially if you're worried about making sure they stay right. Add in a few clusters here and there and then fill in the rest of the area with a different design. You can do some waves with a ruler. You could add some different free motion designs and that unquilted area is just gonna pop out and look really neat. So this would be something fun to do on a more whimsical kind of quilt. Or if you just want a little bit of practice quilting a couple of clamshells and then just wanna call it good. So don't feel like you have to commit to one design over the whole quilt because that could be stressful and I don't want you stressing out. Add a few clusters and then add a different filler and move on. It's gonna make it a little bit less stressful. Okay, so let's talk about the orange peel slash clamshell design. I'm gonna kind of talk you through with these diagrams and I wanna uh, tell you all that the diagrams you're gonna see here are actually available for a free downloadable PDF quilting diagram and tip sheet. All you have to do is click the link in the description box below and you can go there and download that. So you don't have to like furiously draw along with me. You can go get that free PDF. These are just screenshots right off of it. So let's talk about what we're looking at here. First of all, the black circle with a little cross in it, that is representing the foot of our machine. So it's just helping me kind of visualize where that's gonna be at. So starting on the left side in that first needle stop, I'm gonna use my reference lines to make sure that my ruler is straight to my area and I'm gonna quilt along that curve until I get to the next one. And again, I know it's not necessarily how to quilt with rulers, but just take your time and work your way along the curve until you get to the next one, next needle stop. Then I'm gonna just take my ruler, reposition to where I started from on that first needle stop. Again, using those reference lines, especially that horizontal one in the center to make sure that it's staying straight to my area. When you're working on your sewing machine, it can be pretty easy to get your quilt moving in a different direction. And this is just gonna make sure that even if I'm not quilting perfectly horizontal or vertical, it's gonna be going the right direction on my, my quilt. So those reference lines will be very, very helpful. Once I've repositioned, I'm just going to quilt to the next side and then repeat. So I'm just kind of going along the arcs, quickly repositioning and continuing on. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I hit the end of my area. So you could do this over the whole quilt. You could fill it in within a larger block. Um, I wouldn't go any too small of a block because you won't be able to fit very many in there, but you're just gonna keep going until you run out of room. If your area is not exactly the right size of your ruler, for instance, you get done and you have like a two inch space left, but you have a three inch ruler, just keep on quilting until you run into the edge. And then you're gonna add your next row. So. Here, I've quilted my first row, and I wanna add my orange peels. I've decided, I've made my decision, I wanna add an extra bit of detail. And so what I'm gonna do is basically quilt another row upside down from the first one, but it's gonna be offset just a little bit. That's gonna give me that orange peel look. So my foot stays in the same position, but I'm gonna turn my ruler over, and I'm gonna look for that middle reference line, again, using it to help me make sure that it's right where it needs to be and then along the t like the little feet or the little pointy ends of Shelly are also two more reference lines I'm going to use those to make sure that they're kind of touching that previously quilted arc to make sure that I'm quilting it correctly once I have it in place I'm just going to quilt up to the previously quilted line so at this point we're using that first row just kind of as a guide and then quilting our arc and once I touch that I'm gonna reposition the ruler and repeat. So then making sure those two reference lines at the top are touching my previously quilted line, then I can quilt along my arc and continue on. Now let's talk about this for just a second. 
if we notice, since my ruler is flipped upside down, I'm still getting the same size arcs, so this is great. I can work from the same side of my foot. But if you're having trouble quilting without the needle stops, you can simply take the Shelly ruler, move it up, stick it behind your foot, and then quilt from the other side. So you can really kind of tailor it to what makes you feel better, what, what you prefer. Um, on a sewing machine, you could quilt your whole row, turn your quilt, and do the same. Again, on a long arm, not really practical to turn your quilt, so getting comfortable using both sides of Shelly might be the way to go with that. So again, I'm gonna work my way, quilting up to those arcs and repositioning. Main difference here is the, re or the uh, reference lines I'm using are on the little ends of the, of the ruler. And then once I get to my starting point, I have my first row of orange peels. So aren't they beautiful? So pretty. Now this is where I like to sometimes challenge you. If you are more comfortable with machine quilting, and by that I mean you can like breathe and machine quilt at the same time, you don't have to use a ruler for that second row. Use the ruler to create your first set of clamshells and then you could freehand the, the next step because you already have those kind of guidelines there. Now, I can't see your face, but I'm sure a portion of you are rolling your eyes at me. You don't have to, you don't have to do it. You can use your ruler, but if you want to get it done a little quicker or maybe it's busier fabric, just free motion it will get it close. And by the time you're done, it'll all look great. But that's up to you. I'll let you stop rolling your eyes now. <laughs> all right, once I have my first row, I'm gonna repeat that. I'm gonna do it over and over and over again, but I need to get to the second row. And this is where the straight edge of Shelly comes in handy. I mean, sure, I could grab my straight edge ruler. Slim is one of my best friends, my best quilting rulers. But since I'm already here, I'm already using the Shelly ruler, I can just go ahead and use that straight edge to travel along the edge of the area. So this means when you're quilting this design, I'm going from edge to edge, whether that's the whole quilt or just the seams of my block, and I'm gonna travel along that seam to get to the next row. So if you look at my first row, I need my next row, I need to get up twice as high so I can come down and do the next one. If you're quilting along and you're trying to figure out where to go, just pause and kind of use your finger to think about like, where do I need to go to add my next ones? Then once you kind of wrap your mind around it, then you can continue on. So here, I'm gonna quilt my next row. It's gonna be offset from the very first one I quilted. So that's probably the most difficult thing to remember. I promise though, after a couple rows, this will be no problem. So just don't be too stressed out about the idea. Just download that free quilting diagrams and I'll show you how to do it. So how do I know that I'm in the right spot? Well, I have my horizontal reference line is lined up with my previously quilted row. That's a good sign. And you notice the needle stop is actually about a quarter inch, eighth of an inch below that previously quilted line. Why is that? Well, that's because the foot of the machine, I have to take that quarter inch into account. And then I'm gonna quilt along into that needle stop and then continue. So just starting that next row, it can be a little bit to think about, but once you get started, then you can continue on quilting your next row and then flipping it over and coming back. I promise, again, after trying this for a few times, a couple rows, it'll be, it'll be pretty easy. So let's do this. Let's switch over to my, my camera and let's talk about some of these designs because I wanna break down how they go together and kind of encourage you when you're working with, whether it's your arc ruler or your pointy arc ruler, that you can create some fun designs. So this is the sample that we saw earlier. Again, just to reiter reiterate, I can position my ruler I'm using my reference line to stay with my bottom edge, quilting to my needle stop, and then quickly repositioning and continuing on. All right, so we've already kind of seen that. At this point, I have to decide, do I want to add my orange peels now, or do I want to skip them, or do I want to add them later? You don't have to go ahead and add the second part right now. I could come back later and do that, especially if I'm on a sewing machine and it's easy to kind of m reposition my quilt. Um, maybe I just start with my first clamshells and decide how I feel about this before I commit to doing them. Uh, but whatever you decide, if I decide, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do my next one, I'm going to again stitch along the side of my ruler and I'm gonna shift it over to the halfway point. Basically, I want that row that I'm quilting now to land halfway in the middle of the arc I quilted previous. Again, it doesn't have to be right on point, I just wanna get it somewhere close but once I get it going, then I can quickly reposition my ruler and then continue working my way along. All right, so then 
This one will end in a little half C, and I'll go right into my next one. Now, if I'm trying this for the first time, or if you're trying this for the first time, I would get a sample or a piece of fabric and just practice a couple rows before actually using it on the quilt. Uh, but know that if you're filling in an area that doesn't quite perfectly fit the arcs, if I have any little space left above or below, I can just add some echo lines and fill it in. Remember, I've said this so many times, <laughs> I'm sure you're tired of hearing it, but I, uh, people will notice a gap in the quilting before they notice an error. So I just wanna make sure that everything is filled in. All right, so clamshells slash orange peels. But let's see some of the other things that I showed you and let's talk about how those were created. So here are those circles. Again, if we imagine going around the first, I'll go to this one, the first arc, that's gonna be my half circle. And I can either turn my ruler over, do the same on the other side, or work from the same side of my foot and just shift down and create my circle. Um, I find this a lot easier, again, than just using the circle rulers. It's really, uh, circles aren't hard to quilt, but they're not my favorite. So if I was gonna do something like this, I probably would add a filler or something in there. But you can, if you'd like. And this could be a border design, or maybe just a way to break up the bigger area of negative space and throw a different design in there. Just it's a fun little, little deal. All right, let's talk about those border designs that we were kind of looking at. First of all, here I have just some echoed arcs, and that was a question that came through on the text chat before we started. How do you keep your echoes consistent with your arcs? So let's talk about that. This is a great way to give a curvy look to a border or an area of your quilt. And even though this fake border just so happens to perfectly fit my ruler, I could use it in a narrower border as well as long as I keep it centered. So using that center reference line is gonna help make sure that happens. So the trick with echoing arcs is once you quilt it, it's very deceiving um, lining up the next one. So if I quilt my arc, I'm not gonna look at that previous one. I'm just gonna travel up the side however much spacing I want, whether it's a quarter inch or a half of an inch, then reposition and then quilt my next arc, right? So I'm not, it, it, sometimes it can be hard to look at the previously quilted one and know where to put your next echo. But I did add a couple of reference lines for those arcs so that if you were doing something like this, you could use those previously quilted lines. But for the most part, I'm just going along the edge and then repositioning and working my way up. This, like I said, a great way to add a curvy look to, the, to a bigger border, but not necessarily I mean, I guess you could do that over the whole quilt, but not necessarily something I would do over the whole quilt. Now, remember this little guy we saw? Um, I like to joke, just because you paid for the whole ruler doesn't mean you have to use the whole thing. So when you're working with your arcs, think about what kind of designs you could make if you just use part of the ruler or part of the arc. In this particular example, I'm quilting a half arc. So I'm going up to that middle reference line, but then backtracking until I'm about to the center of this whole area. So we can see here going up and then backtracking. Now, if traveling or stitching along a previously quilted line makes you a little nervous, don't be. Because if I'm leaving this ruler in place, I can just quilt up and come right back and it's gonna be pretty close. And even if it comes off of that line a bit, it'll be fine. Then my foot is here. I'm just gonna reposition up to the next one, quilt along it and backtrack. So when you're working with those rulers, I think you might find some fun kind of variations you can come up with if you just use part of it. And this is especially helpful if you're working with a ruler that's too big for the area, right? It's too big for what you're quilting, so just use part of it. Now remember those cute little leaves that we saw? If we look at this, instead of looking at it as leaf shape, look at it as half arcs. So I have one, two, three, four half arcs, and that's gonna give me that, that kind of leaf shape. So again, using the straight edge of Shelly to get to that point, then I'm gonna quilt my first half arc to my corner, flip over, quilt, and then do my last one. I'll know I've done it correctly if I end up in the same point that I started with so that I can easily go on to the next one. So we saw in the motifs how we can put it in all different directions, and we've seen how you can just use part of the ruler, now we're kind of combining those together using part of the arc, going in all different directions to create a different shape. If we look at this next guy over here, so this is just a row of clamshells. Actually, I'll do this. This is a row of clamshells, the first one, and then my orange peel. But the second row, I just came in and added my next one, like I normally would, but left this unquilted. 
this would be fun for a border. If you have like a wider border and you want a little bit more detail closer to an element you want to show off, it just gives it a little bit of a scalloped look and it's quicker than quilting a second row of, of those orange peels. Again, it totally depends on your preferences, but you could come back later and fill in this with different fillers, add some echo lines, um, use it as a way to really kind of add a wow factor to your quilt. This one is basically kind of supposed to look kind of like stars or a little bit of overlapping for a more dense border design. What's fun about any kind of machine quilting is once you start layering more rows or more designs on top of each other, it looks so complex and it even might look a little difficult, but all this is is a half arc in both, both directions. So I go out and then out. So you can see it's just my little arcs. And it was quilted by creating, going around, continuing on, and then flipping to the other side, flipping around and overlapping it. So when you're quilting with your rulers, overlapping it but changing the directions, flipping them from each other is going to create this, this kind of different effect. Again, maybe for a smaller border that I want to add a little bit more of a dense look. All right, this next one is the last one I have to show. And it may look complicated, but I love how it looks as an all over kind of design. And it just goes to show you when you string together multiple shapes, you're going to get a different effect. So this particular design is actually a row, let me go down here, a row of arcs going one direction and a row of arcs going the other direction. So think of it like crosshatch, right? Where I just have rows, straight lines, going both different directions. The illusion that it looks more difficult is just because I'm using my arc ruler. So let's pretend I start here, I'm quilting my arc. My next one is gonna go in the opposite direction. So I'm working on this line right here. So I'm basically just quilting, and instead of those clamshells where they're all going the same direction, I'm alternating the direction as I go. Okay, so up, down, up, down. And then once I get to the edge of my area, I'm gonna quilt another clamshell going now the opposite direction or along the edge to get to my next row. That's gonna help keep them spaced out the same amount, uh, but you could also just travel along if you wanted to and then repeat. So again, flipping it over. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I can't ever remember this. Remember, when you get to your fabric and you're gonna start quilting with your rulers and have a good time, try alternating directions and going in different ways. I think you'll find that's fun. Now, once I have a couple of these quilted, so here's my first wavy line right there. I should have quilted these in different colors so you can see it. Now I'm gonna start quilting my row in my different direction. So there's my first one, second one, and third one. And as they start to overlap, it's gonna make a really cool kind of, uh, kind of effect. Again, you might think, oh, I don't know if I wanna do that. Well, you can just, you can just quilt one direction and it's just gonna give you this kind of um, area that gets bigger and smaller that you can come back in later and fill in if you want. But the main idea being that no matter which ruler you're using, I hope that you'll go in all different directions and kind of experiment because that's when you'll find those fun, um, unintentional designs. So any questions come through? Mm -hmm. Got a few about the, about the arcs. Again, if you're not watching this live or I didn't get to your question, no worries. Leave it in the comment section because I get on from time to time and answer questions and other quilters are really great about helping out. Is there a ruler that can help me quilt a cable design in my border? Yes, you can actually do that with an arc ruler because an, it's a cable is just kind of continuing on but just echoing. So what you'll do, and maybe I'll have to do this in a live chat, um, you're gonna quilt a couple of rows go in the same echoed and then the next ones you'll flip around so that they cross over. So I know that this is not helping you out but any kind of arc ruler will do that. I will say um, cable designs have such an elegant look and it's such a nice traditional design but try to go with a little bit bigger um, ruler because it can be kind of tedious to keep changing positions. So you didn't ask that question but I answered it for you. Um, do I normally quilt these side by side with the ruler on the bottom? Um, so when I'm quilting on my sewing machine, I prefer to work or vertically. So instead of holding my ruler like this, I'm actually going to turn to the side and work like this. That's just because that's how I prefer to quilt. Now, that doesn't mean that I only can quilt it that way on my quilt sandwich. I can reposition my quilt sandwich to get it where I need to so I can quilt it the way I want to. So 
I, I prefer to go vertically. You might find horizontal easier though because you can see your path a little bit easier. I just hate having to stop so often as I run into my machine. Now on a long arm, I will quilt these um, in horizontal motion because that's just the easier way. But what about quilting clamshells on a long arm, right? If we're starting at the bottom and working our way up, that's not very ideal. Well, what I would do is either load the quilt upside down, probably load the quilt upside down and quilt them, start upside down and build in that way. So just slightly different. Again, not the question you asked, but ultimately as you're playing with your rulers and you're trying to find some different designs that you like to quilt with them, just try all different directions and find which feels more comfortable for you. You'll know pretty quick if you like something or not. When are my new rulers coming out? I don't know. They're supposed to be out in October. Um, they've went to production. I am so excited to show them to you. I emailed Creative Grids. I was like, hey, is there an ETA? I want to tell people about it. So as soon as I can tell you, I'll let you know. I'm excited to show those to you. And then when is the next free motion quilting challenge? I love that you guys are so excited about doing these challenges with me or these kind of, I mean, it's almost like a, a six part class. Um, I'm working on the next challenge right now and hopefully, hopefully be out in the next month or so. Hopefully, we'll see. Would love to see live chats on all my rulers. So one thing I was thinking of is as you're working with your tools, sometimes we buy this ruler or this thing at a quilt show because somebody was demoing it and it looked really cool. And then we get home and we're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with this. So I'll be glad to do some more live chats on specific rulers, just knowing that you can apply those to um, any of those rulers that you have hanging around. So, so, so glad um, that, that you liked it. And we'll do some more of that. Now, if you wanna get your hands on a Shelly ruler, whether it's a low shank or the high shank, you can check out the description box below. There's a link to all that. I will say um, I love the black and white markings, which means you can see it on any quilt that you're on, and then also has some Creative Grids grip on the back. Now, one of the questions that came through was, how do I keep my ruler from slipping when I'm quilting? So this grip kind of helps hold it in place, but if it's not quite grippy enough for you, you can add some extra grip on the back. Um, there's handy grip, there's true grips, just something to give it a little bit more tackiness to help it stay in place as you're quilting. But I will say that, that the more you practice with it, the easier it'll get and the less you'll feel it slipping around from you. So I hope you've enjoyed this live chat. It's a little bit different format. I'm kind of experimenting with different topics. And if there's a particular topic that you want me to chat about, leave it in the comments because you know, it's a lot easier if you come up with the ideas than if I have to come up with them myself. Now, even though I go live every Thursday, I won't be here next week. So next Thursday, no live chat. I will be at QuiltCon enjoying the quilt show, Modern, Modern Quilt Guild, Modern Quilt Show. It'll be the first show that I have attended, I think ever, when I wasn't working or demoing or anything. I'm going just as a, an attendee. I'm super excited to see the quilts. So I won't be here next Thursday, but the Thursday after we will resume the live chat with another uh, topic at on Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. So everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Happy quilting. <laughs>